Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is me, Apostle Esther. I pray that you are already having an amazing day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. It is a choice to rejoice. I want to take a moment to thank all of you that are sharing, liking, and those of you that have already subscribed to my content. Thank you so very much to all of you that are sharing uh, my content from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate that so, so, so very much. We're super excited about the assignment that the Lord has us on. I am simply an ambassador, a good news carrier of the gospel message. Super excited about what God has called, appointed, and anointed me to do. You already know I'm going to hang out right here with you a couple of my notes. We're coming right back with the word of faith to share with you what the Lord has shared with me. I'm Apostle Esther. I'm simply an ambassador of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give me a moment. We'll be right back. God bless you. As promised, we are right back. Thank you so much for giving me that moment. Today, we want to look at Romans chapter 8. Um, I know that we have started the series on the dreamers anointing, and we're going to continue with that on tomorrow. But earlier today, Apostle and I were out, and uh, we began to discuss um, this past passage in Romans chapter 8. So I'm going to look at maybe a couple of passages from there. Um, and I want to share something with you, and then we're going to still continue in our flow of the dreamer's anointing. But I want to share this with you out of Romans chapter 8. Uh, let's begin with verse 1. And the word of the Lord says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So when we look at this, that there is therefore now no condemnation, um, this simple declaration of no condemnation comes to those of us who are in Christ Jesus. When we are in Christ Jesus, we don't have to hold our head down. We don't have to be boggled down with the thoughts of sin and the thoughts of our past. We can walk in the liberty that there is no condemnation between me and the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because I don't walk according to my flesh, but I walk according to the spirit. And the Bible says, that it is in him we live, we move, we have our being. And so we move in the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because he has imputed himself down on the inside of us. And when we understand that there is no condemnation, whatever God is showing us, whatever he's revealing to us, whatever he's dealing with us in our dreams and ambitions, we can be comforted by this, that there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Watch how Paul carefully worded that to the kingdom. He said, when you're in Christ, your life is hid in Christ. So when our lives are hid in Christ, we can walk in the liberty and go forth and do what God has commanded us to do. There is such a, a mystery of this union of us and Christ, but we know that it is unbreakable. It is unshakable. It is unmovable because we are hid in Christ. And the more we learn of this mystery, the more God reveals himself to us. Christ is in the believers and his spirit is on the inside of us. And we receive this by faith. It is the same faith that saves us. It is the same faith that heals us. It is the same faith that delivers us. So when we're in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. I say this all the time. As God is elevating us, as he's promoting us, um, the enemy will always try and come with something from your past to condemn you or to disqualify you, um, to make you miss God. But the word of the Lord gives us a covenant on today. There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ. 
That's the key. We must be in Christ. There is a place of confidence. There is a place of peace. There is a place of healing when we say there is therefore now no condemnation. So that means that I can move into liberty. I can move into hope. I can move into love. I can move in that place where God grows me from glory to glory because I'm not walking after my flesh. How many of us know that our flesh is a mess? But when we understand that I'm not walking to my flesh, according to my flesh, but I am walking according to the spirit of Christ. So whenever his spirit is on the inside of me, I love what Paul said, when I would to do good, evil was always present. But Paul also understood that he was no longer living or abiding in his flesh, but he began to move in the spirit of God. So as we walk according to the spirit of Christ, we can move so freely in this covenant that Satan cannot hold anything up. Whenever he tries to bring back our past, we need to hold up the bloodstained banner and say, I've been washed in the blood of the lamb. It's a spiritual law that now you can't hold anything over my head because anything that you hold over my head, it's under my feet. Jesus took care of my past at the cross of Calvary. He took care of the present. He took care of the future at the cross of Calvary. And that is the liberty that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ is that he paid it all. He paid it all on Calvary's cross. And because of that, I'm set free. And the Bible says, whom the son set free is free indeed. I love the hymn that says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know that he holds my future. He really has my future already in his capable hands and whom God has in his hands, no man can pluck from out of the hand of God. I just really wanted to share that with you on the day because really and truly it is in him we live. And when we understand that we are not moving and operating by the confines of the flesh, but we're moving and we're operating at the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. I also wanted to share out of the same chapter on today. Uh, let me just see if I can, um, let me see if I can just pull this up really, really quickly. I wanted to share with you as well, uh, the latter portion uh, of this chapter. I'm just trying to pull my font up so that I can read it to you um, and, and share this with you as well. Um, I'm going to read Romans um, chapter 8 and 28, and I believe it's through 29. So let me get this pulled up so that we can see this. So the word of the Lord says in Romans 8 and 29 out of the NIV, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. So when we understand that we don't move by the dictates of our flesh, but we move by the spirit of the true and the living God, we know that some things are going to work for, yes, for our good. Uh, that is a covenant that we have with the Lord. And we can stand confident in that, that all things are going to work together for my good. I often say it may not feel good, it may not look good, but the confidence that I have, it's working for my good. Why? Because I don't live in the flesh. I live in the spirit of Christ. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Uh, let me read this um, out of Romans. Um, let me see if I can. I, I, I just favor um, the King James translation. I want to move right down to Romans uh, chapter, uh, still in chapter eight, but I want to move down to verse 31. Um, I um, um, Okay, we have it right here. Um, I wanted to pull that up. I, I tell you, I just, uh, I favor the King James translation uh, a, a little bit more. So the, 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 the 31st verse says, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If God is on my side, who can be against me? In the Bible, Paul quickly answers this. And this is what he says. 
He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? God has a master plan to release all things to us, but we must walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. It is important to us that we understand our covenant as born again believers. This is where I wanted to get to verse 35. And it says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? 36, as it is written for thy sake, we are killed all the day long, we are accounted sheep for the slaughter. But I love this in 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Let me read that again. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Verse 38, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Again, he writes this, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. As born again believers, it is so important for us to be found in Christ Jesus. Paul starts this scripture telling us that there is no condemnation, but in order for this to be a covenant relationship, it's going to require us getting in Christ Jesus, not in our feelings, not in our mind, but to get our lives hid in Christ Jesus. And when we're hid in him, he simply says to us, that we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. And, and now that we're more than conquerors, nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. I simply love that, knowing that that is a covenant with us, that nothing can separate us from the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because we are in him. It is in him we live. It is in him we move. It is in him we have our beings. And if we don't move in him, we may as well not move at all. I also wanted to say that in this scripture, that the Bible says that there is an earnest groaning and an earnest expectation that the, the glory of the Lord is made manifest in us. And how can that happen? It can happen because my life is hid in Christ through, G my life is hid in Christ through the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm hid in him. So a lot of times when we move, we need to understand that it's a covenant relationship that we can move in him and we can move freely in him. Let me just see if I can just quickly pull this other uh, passage up um, for us really, really quickly. Um, I just wanted to share that, that we understand that when we move in him, that the, the Bible says, um, I, I know I'm talking and typing at the same time, but I want to make sure that I don't miss this uh, while we are teaching this word on today. Hallelujah. But our life is hid um, in the Lord Jesus Christ. That was it. I was trying to get to uh, verse 19 out of Romans 8. And it says, for all creation is awaiting eagerly for the future day when God will reveal who his children really are. The earth is groaning in expectation that that was out of the in the New Living Translation. But then the King James says, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. And when we understand that we are the sons of God, we are the called, we are the appointed, we are the anointed, we are the voice in the earth realm. We understand that we don't walk in condemnation. We don't walk in fear. We don't walk after the flesh, but we, we are in hot pursuit 
of the things of God. So we must uh, live that life where that we can allow God to speak to us. That discipline life, that's the word that I was looking for. When we're disciplined and we understand that his word is applicable to my life. Whatever his word says, that's what I become. We, um, I wrote the book, but believers believe and believers receive. We become what we believe and we speak God's word until we become the word. We speak God's word until we see the word. Why? Because the word of the Lord says there is an earnest expectation from God that we become the sons of God. I begin to look like God. I begin to think like God. I begin to respond like God. Why? Because the word said God is expecting us to do that. And then he said, there's no condemnation. So nothing should hold you back from achieving this spiritual place in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh my goodness. I tell you this word, this word is so powerful on today. The creation waits eagerly for the longing and the revealing of the sons of God. Won't you let him reveal you on today? Won't you let him, amen, show forth his glory in your life, in the earth realm? Why? Because I've humbled myself. I've committed myself. I've submitted myself. I've repented of my sins. And I know that there is nothing between me and God because the Bible says that when I'm the righteousness of God, hallelujah, there is no good thing that he will withhold from me. Hallelujah. That's why it is important for us to understand the enemy cannot confine you. He cannot condemn you. He cannot restrict you. The Bible says whom the son set free is free indeed. So we need to move forth in that liberty that it is in him. We live, we move, we have our being. If we don't move in him, we may as well not move at all. I'm telling you, we are liberated on today. God has set us free. Amen. He's lifted the boundary off of our head. He took it on the cross of Calvary. He hung high. They stretched him wide. He, he gave his blood so that we can have a right to the tree of life. We can have a right to eternal life. The blood came to set us free. The blood came to let us know that every covenant, every promise in the word of God, I can apply it to my life and I can see God bringing forth his glory. Why? Because there is an earnest expectation for us to become the sons of God. He wants to manifest that glory in your life. He wants to manifest that glory in my life. And it is important that we get in a place where we are sensitive to hear what he's saying. That's why the word of the Lord says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more we hear God's word, then we become God's word. We, we begin to, to, to reflect the image of God. We were created in his image and after his likeness. I'm super excited about this word on today because nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Not height, not depth, depth, life, nor death. Nothing, no creature, no being can separate us from the love of God. Why? Because our life is hid in Christ. Our life is hid in Christ. The, the old church used to sing, to be like Jesus, to be like, oh, how I long to be like Jesus. I want to reflect his glory. I want him to tr transform my life. I want him to conform my life that I look like my father. Well, you already know. I was so excited to be able to get in here and share this good news gospel message of the Lord Jesus Christ from Romans 8. Just a couple of passages that really, really, really just began to burn in my spirit on today. And I wanted to share that with you. Amen. Nothing shall separate us from the love of Christ. Why? Because the word of the Lord says there is therefore now no condemnation to those of us who are in Christ. And it's important. It is important for us to remain 
in Christ. Keep your position. Stay on your post. Stay on your assignment. Don't you allow distraction to cause you to miss what God has purposed for your life in this time and in this season. We're going to be back on this week. We're still talking about the dreamer's anointing, but, but we needed to understand as we're moving forth in this, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And whenever he's speaking to us, we need to understand that we don't need to walk in condemnation. The Bible says lift up your head O ye gates and be ye lifted up and the king of glory shall come in who is the king of glory the lord god strong and mighty mighty in battle he's the king of glory he is our king he is our healer he is our deliverer let me pray with you on the day Father, I thank you for every person that is under the sound of my voice. I thank you, Lord God, that you are an excellent God. Oh, Lord, our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. I thank you, Lord God, for this word that we are, are, are partaking in on today. I thank you that it'll fall on good ground. It'll bring forth much harvest, that it will liberate the hearts and the minds of your people, that we understand that we are not walking in a condemned place, but we're walking in a place of liberty. We're walking in a place of victory. And for that, we give you praise. For that, we give you glory. For that, we give you honor. Lord, if there is one that is listening today under the sound of my voice that is not saved, that does not know you as Lord and Savior, wash them right there. Wash them in your blood and fill them with your love. Forgive them of their sins and let them know that you are now their Lord, Master, Savior, Healer, and Deliverer. Now, Father, I thank you that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, it is acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my Redeemer, let all of God's people say, Amen. You already know I'm super excited about this assignment. I'm encouraged to go forth and do what God has called me to do. Thank you for being a part of my YouTube family. Thank you for being a part of my internet family from the bottom of my heart, uh, my heart, Apostle Esther, and from the bottom of Apostle Chris's heart. We thank you for sharing and spending this time with us. I know that the word of the Lord blessed you on today. I just want to say God bless you to all of God's amazing people. I want you to have an amazing day. We're, of course, we're going to be back on this week with more good news gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to continue our series on the dreamer's anointing, on the dreamer's anointing. Just want you to know that periodically the Lord will give me a, a passage and it's just burning in my heart. And I know that I need to share that because it's a word that we all need to hear. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me. We'll be back on tomorrow, 10 o'clock. If you're a subscriber, you already know. Yes, you have that added benefit that that bell, that subscriber's bell will alert you that my video, my content is viewable and it is shareable. So thank you so much to all of my viewers. God bless you. All of my subscribers, God bless you. Tell somebody about my, my video ministry. You know I love doing what I'm doing because I'm here to encourage, to inspire, and to motivate you. As always, have an amazing day. I'm Apostle Esther Sanctius. I'm simply an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Super excited about the assignment that the Lord has me on. You can join me every single day at 10 o'clock. You don't have to miss anything that the Lord is saying. You don't have to miss anything that he's speaking because whatever he gives me, I am absolutely positively, I'm going to share it with you so that we don't miss what the Lord is speaking in this hour. Again, I thank you so much for joining me. I also want to remind you that my book is available. It is available on Amazon. Believers believe and believers receive. You can go right over to amazon.com and pick up your copy on today, Becoming What You Believe. Everything in this book is already what we've been saying on these videos, but it's just good to have a tangible copy to go back and say, you know what? Apostle said that in her book. And so uh, this book is just a, a great gift um, as well. If you'd like to share it with family and friends, see if we can, there we are right there. 
uh, it will bless them. Um, it will bless them to have a copy of this. Believers believe and believers receive. We thank God for that ministry, uh, for gracing us to be able to, to complete that assignment. And we're excited about the things that the Lord has purpose for us to do on this year. Again, I'm asking you to subscribe to my YouTube ministry. Um, we are, are breaking barriers every day, um, and, and we could not do this without you helping us. So I want to thank you for you, your helping us and your tuning in. Those of you that have reached out to say, hey, Apostle, how can I, you know, so um, tithe into the ministry? You can do so through Cash App, dollar sign, Kings Court Men. And we thank you for, for connecting with us. We thank you for seeding and sowing into our ministry. I'm telling you, God is doing great things. We're super excited about what he's doing. He's saving, he's healing, he's delivering, and he's setting free. People are always reaching out to me saying, hey, I heard the word and it blessed me. It changed my life. And that's what we're here for, to encourage, to inspire, and to motivate all of us as we continue, as we go forth on this kingdom assignment. And so this year, um, that's our purpose is to continue doing the work of the Lord, continue to do to do the will of the Lord. Listen, I'm going to get out of here. Have an amazing day again. Thank you so much for joining me every day at 10 o'clock. God bless you.